You are everything. You are all in all. Hallelujah. We ask you, y'all, to be with us today, to keep us today, to help us today. Yeah, we ask you to remove all distractions, y'all. Help us to walk in your ways, to walk in your wisdom. Turn, turn the sound down a little bit, I see a little bit for my ear. To walk in your wisdom, to walk in your understanding. I pray, y'all, that you would increase our desire to love you. Increase our desire to be obedient, to walk in your ways, to, to humble ourselves. Show us your purpose, y'all. We want to be <clears throat> in good standing with you, just like when Daniel prayed, and as he prayed, the angel appeared before him, called him friend, because you sent the angel to him, because you consider him a friend. You consider him part of your kingdom. We want to have that same favor. Or y'all, even as Gideon was in the wine press, threshing wheat, in the, 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 the Malachi, Yehovah the Malachi, who appeared, and called him a mighty man of valor and said that you was with him. We want to have that same favor to have an understanding, y'all, that you are with us. Mm -hmm. That you keep us. We need you and we cannot make it without you. We can't succeed in life at all without you. We need your help. We ask you to just give us wisdom, understanding. Teach us, y'all, how to love our enemies, how to, how to love our neighbors. Teach us how to walk in the right steps. How to honor your days, how not to compromise or give in because of fear, but to stand strong and to be strong in you. So we just thank you. I pray that even as we teach the word today, that you will increase our faith. I trust in you. For your word it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. So we pray that you will increase our trust. Increase it, God, so we can believe in you and not give in to the adversary because of the trials and tests that we have or because of the ways that we have to go. So we thank you and we just glorify you in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Sh Shabbat Shalom. And I praise Yah. <clears throat> Today is the 21st day of counting the Omer. Day number 21. The attributes of the day, this, this is week three, and the attributes of the day are beauty, Harmony and compassion. Amen. Beauty, harmony, and compassion. So we have created three weeks. Listen, today is day number 21, so we pray. We praise you, O Yah, our El, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by Yeshua the Messiah, our eternal Redeemer and Savior, and commanded us to count the honor. By faith, we wait with joyful hearts to celebrate. The sending of your Ruach HaKodesh. Hallelujah. And that's traditionally, uh, we read Psalm 67, because Psalm 67 uh, in Hebrew has 49 words. So we're going to read Psalm 67. Uh, you can turn to it, or you have to turn to it, I have it right here. It says, Yah, be merciful to us and bless us. May you make your face shine toward us, so that your way may be known on earth. You have salvation among all nations. Let all the people give thanks to you, Yah. Let the people give thanks to you, to you, all of them. Let the nations be glad and shout for joy, for you would judge the peoples fairly and guide the guide and guide the, the, the nations on the earth. Let all the people give thanks to you, Yah. And all the people give thanks to you. All of them. The earth has yielded its harvest. And may Yah our El bless us. May Yah continue to bless us so that all the ends of the earth will fear you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Sitting at the feet of our Messiah Yeshua. Don't open your mouth. If, if your words will be a poor reflection of the Master, Yeshua, uh, to your friend and family. It says, don't open your mouth if your words will be a poor reflection of the master Yeshua for your friends and family. Shut your mouth. Amen. <clears throat> First Peter 2, 22 to 25 says, He committed no sin, nor any deceit was found on his lips. And when he was insulted, 
he didn't retaliate with insults. When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but handed them over to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his own body on the stake, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you were healed, for you used to be like sheep going astray, but now you have turned to the shepherd who watches over you. The Messiah Yeshua is our example of how we are to act in the face of persecution. When he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. When he was abused and suffered, he made no threats of vengeance. <clears throat> the carnal believer that walks after the flesh will always react with wrong words when he or she is reviled or insulted. Everything we say and do is a reflection of the master we serve. Our lives and words showing that we serve Messiah Yeshua are, are our lives and words showing that we serve the Messiah Yeshua or are our words showing the world that the adversary is the master of our lives? We are to be ruach or spirit controlled at all times and, and take this discipline. But when we do the fruit of the ruach and spirit, when we do the fruit of the ruach and spirit become more evident in our lives and to those around us and bring esteem to Yah. As believers who walk according to Torah and we proclaim Messiah Yeshua as our master, we need to be accountable to one another for our actions and words and be quick to repent to one another. When we need to return to the practice, we need to return to the practice in a renewed covenant, the New Testament, that tells us to confess our faults and sins to one another so we will be healed. We are so full of pride and fear of rejection that we do not want to do this. However, if we do, healing will come. Then, that, that is what being a, being a Messianic community is all about. And it is what knits us together when we learn to love, forgive, and pray for one another. James 5.16 says, Therefore, openly acknowledge your sins to one another and pray for each other so you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Today, make the decision to follow after <clears throat> Messiah and his example, and let him be the master of your life in every area, especially your words. May our lips speak forth words filled with beauty, harmony, and compassion as we wait, as we await his return. The first step is avoiding evil, to avoid an evil speech is to recognize our own faults and commit to improving on them. When I accept that I alone am responsible for my inadequacies, then I, will, then I will similarly be less critical and more tolerant of others. If you find yourself getting, getting down about yourself on others, try focusing away from the faults and instead, and, instead, and instead on the virtues. Philippians 4 and 8 encourages, finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, Whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. It will lift you out of negativity. The Torah encourages us, don't take the easy way out, fit it down. Work hard to improve yourself. Amen. amen. Have a wonderful Shabbat. Shalom. So amen, that's, that, that's day 21 of counting the Omer. It's important. We are commanded to count the Omer. Count down to Shavuot. Um, on, on, when, you, when you read Acts 2, uh, that's, that's about 1,300 years later when, um, when, when, after Yeshua had left. And the spirit of truth was given on Shavuot. Now, the spirit of truth didn't come for men to go, that is not what they were doing. The correct translation is that we're speaking other languages. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the scriptures, um, they begin to prophesy. They begin to foretell, foretell the word of Yah. Yah was putting his covenant, his Torah, on their inward parts. Clover tongues of fire came on the head. They began to speak as the spirit gave them utterance. So let's get ready, be excited, get yourself together, be disciplined. Learn to love. Let's walk in humility. Let's let's combat the adversary. Let's let's not let the adversary 
to feed us and kill us. He's cunning and crafty. He's, he, he's trickery. He, he's a trickster. And we should not let him defeat our lives. That's not good. You know, we need to really live right and not compromise and give in because of how we feel. You know, even, you know, sometimes I feel like a nut and sometimes I don't. You know, I'm a joy has nuts, my own don't. It ain't about how you feel. You know, it's about what Yah says, about his word, his way, his will. Amen? And that's real. So we are on uh, part three. This may be our last part, I'm not sure, about being born again. And we're going to deal with um, Israel, separation from Yah. Our foundation of the scripture today is going to be John 3. Um, we're going we're gonna to deal with John 3 about Nicodemus uh, coming to Yeshua. And we, and, but today we're just going we, to... We're going to have to start with verse 1. It's, it's good. So John 3 and 1 says, There was a man among the Perusium or the Pharisees named Nicodemus, who was a ruler of the Judeans. This man came to Yeshua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that it is from Yah that you have come as a teacher. For no one can do these miracles you perform unless Yah is with him. Yes, indeed, Yeshua answered. Yes, indeed. I tell you, that unless a person is born again from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim, the kingdom of Yah. Nicodemus said to him, how can a grown man be born? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? And Yeshua answered, yes, indeed, I tell you that unless a person is born from water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born from the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born from the spirit is spirit. And stop being amazed at my telling you that, you must, that you must be born again from above. The wind blows where it wants to. And you hear the sound. But you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. That's how it is with everyone who has been born from the spirit. Nicodemus replied, how can this happen? And Yeshua answered him, you hold the office of a teacher in Israel and you don't know this? Yes, indeed, I tell you that. What we speak about, we know. And what we give evidence of, we have seen. But you people don't accept our evidence. If you people don't believe me when I tell you about the things of the world, how can you believe me when I tell you about heaven? No one has gone up into heaven. There's only the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life. Now let's, push, let, let, let's, let's go somewhere. The Son of Man. When Yeshua is talking about the Son of Man, when he says the Son of Man, in, from this perspective, he is talking about the deity, the ancient of days. When Daniel saw, he saw one came down that looks like the Son of Man. And what Daniel was saying in his book was, he saw one come down that was majestic, there was a deity, but he looked like a human being. So when Yeshua is saying Son of Man, he is actually identifying himself. Just like when, 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 he, when he was going and the people kept saying, Hosanna, Son of David, have mercy on us, Whatever was calling him Son of David, they was, they was actually referring to him as being the Messiah. Because the bloodline, because the Messiah comes to their bloodline. So Yeshua is talking, is, is talking about being the Son of Man. Now, we're going to deal with, we're going to deal with the subject of uh, what happened by Israel being had to be born again. So we're going to go to, to Isaiah 59 and begin at verse 2. Because what got us in, 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 in the position that we're in? Now listen, because I want to explain something. When Yah made Adam, this, this is not just about Adam. When, when Yah made Adam, all of mankind fell into sin. All of mankind. After Adam, the word says by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, and so by the obedience of one shall many be called into righteousness. But Yeshua after that, after Adam, after Noah, Yah met a man named Avraham. His name was Avram or Abram. And, and, and Yah met a man named Abram. 
and he entered into this covenant with him. And he told him that, that, that all the urges of all the nations of the earth shall be blessed by this one man, him and his descendants after him, him and his seed. So now, Abraham has a son by the promise, from, from the woman of promise, by faith. He had a son named Yeshak. The Hebrew word is Yeshak. The English word is Isaac, which means laughter. And Yeshak had two sons, twins, Esau and Yaakov, or Jacob. And the blessing was given to Yaakov, who in turn had 12 sons. And these 12 sons, uh, they, uh, these 11, 11 of these 12 sons, or 10 of these 12 sons, sold their younger brother at the time, Joseph, into slavery. Sold him into slavery. As he's into slavery, he's gone. Uh, it's been 20 some years, and finally, his brothers appear before him to buy grain because of a famine that was in Egypt. And so, after he reveals himself, he brings his family down to Egypt. They live in Goshen. They're there for a couple of hundred years. They die. They begin, the, the forefathers die. The patriarchs, the, 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 the 12 brothers die. And now the children are left as the sinners in the land of Egypt where there's servitude and where there's bondage. Where they're upon a harsh trial, they've been tested by the wicked king Pharaoh who had no relationship or didn't have no regard for Joseph and what he had done for Egypt. So with that being said, Yah sends his deliverer by the name of Moshe. Moshe, whose name spelled backwards, is the name Hashem, which means rep reputation. So Yah used Moshe to reveal his character and his nature to Israel. Mm -hmm. And so now, as he brings them out of Egypt, he brings them across the Red Sea by a miracle. By Moses raising his rod up, the sea spread, the ground dry, dry, the ground dries, and millions of them walk across on dry land, entering into a covenant with the Most High. There are stipulations: that if you do this, then I will do this. And Yah gave him his his justice system, what we call his mispatim. He gave him his justice system, and, and he, he promised them to bless them in abundance. If they will obey him and, and follow his ways and they will be his people. But he promised to curse them in the abundance if they disobeyed him. And of course we see what the outcome was. Now Isaiah 59 2 says this. Rather, 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 it is your own crimes that separated you from Yah. Your sins have hidden his face from you for, so that he doesn't hear for your hands are stained with blood, and your fingers with crime. Your lips speak lies. Your tongues utter wicked things. No one sues with just with just cause. No one pleads honestly in court. They trust in empty words. They say worthless things. They can see trouble. They give birth to evil. They hatch viper eggs and spin and spin spider webs. Mm. Whoever eats their eggs die. And the crushed egg hatches a snake. Their webs are useless, useless as clothing. Their deeds are useless for wearing. Their deeds are deeds of wickedness. Their hands produce violence. Their feet run to evil. They rush to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of wickedness. Their paths lead to havoc and ruin. The way of shalom they do not know. They're going about they're going about to obey no law, and they make devious paths for themselves. No one treading them will ever know shalom. And that's the condition of Israel without, without being born again. Because of what they do. Because of what they've done. Yah, say, Yah says, rather well, it's your own crimes. It's your own crimes that separate you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he doesn't hear. So, they, so Israel 
is in a state that's a bad situation. They're in a bad state. They're in a bad state. The, 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 listen, the world is, is subject to condemnation, and in the end we have a sinfulness condemned. But Yeshua's first coming was not for that purpose. In, that, in the day of judgment, he would judge who condemns the world. But he came to bring back the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came back to bring mankind back to himself. Now, let, let, let's see what happened to Israel. Let's go to Deuteronomy. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 27 first. Because we, we must be, be born again. But listen, you have to understand why you need to be born again. Because many people don't see themselves in the condition. It's just like somebody, when, when, when I was younger, before I was born again, I, I used to smoke marijuana all the time, every day. Wake up in the morning time, smoke a blunt, and lay down and go to sleep. I got high all the time. But, and I see a pretty girl I like, and I talk to her, and she was like, ooh. Now, I think weed smell good. But she thought that weed was thinking. She couldn't talk. And my point is that people don't see you how you see yourself. And y'all don't see you how you see yourself. You have to be able to see yourself from his perspective. And many people don't see, the, see themselves in a condition that they are separated from y'all. Some are still in the stupor. Some still sleep. Still sleep. Have not awakened to who they are in their identity and don't think that they're in sin. Again, when I was growing up, I didn't have the understanding in my mind because I wasn't taught that a man and a woman had to be married in order to live together. Because I, I was not raised in a household where my parents were married. I wasn't raised by my biological father. I have a stepfather. And, and my mother and my stepfather have only been married now one year longer than my wife and myself. But they've been together for 40 years. So I was raised in a house without having an understanding of a marriage covenant. So when I come into the world, and I'm into the world, I don't think it's a wrong, I don't believe it's a sin for a man and a woman to live together in the same house. I did, I did not think it was a sin to have sex without being married because I thought in my own mind that it was okay to sleep with a female as long as you love her. So I tried to tell every woman that I saw that I love her because I only had one objective and that's not the purpose of the Most High. In order for you to be born again, you must first Acknowledge your condition and you got to stop leaning to your own mindset. You can't see how you see it. The word of God says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. So the way that you see things in your own way that seems right can bring death to your life because your own way is a sinful way. So you got to see yourself. You know, many people cry out, well, I, well, I, well, well, I'm confused and, and God don't hear me. Well, first of all, the Most High is not the author of confusion. So if you say you are a believer and you're confused, you may want to check your lifestyle and see how you are living. Because that's the truth. Because you as a believer should have power over all the enemy. Amen. Yeshua said, I've given you power over all the enemy. And, he said, and then he said in Luke 10, the same chapter, don't even rejoice in that. But rejoice rather that your name is written in the book of life. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Deuteronomy 26. We're going to start at verse 16. No? We're going to do 27 next. I'm sorry. 26. Today, Yahuwah, your Elohim, orders you to obey all these laws and rulings, 
Therefore, you are to observe and obey them with all of your heart and with all your being. You are agreeing today that Yah is your God and that you will follow his ways, observe his laws, his commandments and rulings, and do what he says. So today, Yah, Elohim, is ordering you. He's not asking you. He's not playing with you. He's commanding. He's ordering. He's giving instructions. Because first of all, he understands his position. He knows who he is. And he needs you to see him in that same way so he responds to you in his full capacity so you can see him in that, in, in that, in that light. He's ordering Israel to obey all his laws, to obey all his rulings. Now listen, you're, if you're Israel, this still applies to you. Whether you're a natural Israel or whether you're granted into the coming wealth of Israel, the word of Yah still applies to your life. And if you don't follow Torah, then you are in trouble. It don't matter what the people say, we no, no longer under the law. They're telling you a lie. Mm -hmm. You still got to follow Torah. The Torah was never given to redeem, I mean, to, to, to save anybody. It was always given to a redeemed people after they were born again. They was given Torah. People right now in, in, in traditional churches and in Christianity is waiting for Pentecost. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is only given to, to anybody that's redeemed. Amen. And the spirit of Yah that's given to you is given to you after you're redeemed. is given to lead you and guide you into all truth. What is truth? His word is truth. His word, what's his word? What is Yeshua talking about? His word is the Torah. The Tanakh, the Torah, the Naveen and Ketavim, the writing of the prophets. You sure didn't have Paul's letters. Right. He didn't have Timothy and 2 Timothy and Hebrews and Corinthians. He had Daniel. He had Lamentations, Jeremiah. He had Maccabees and Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Genesis and Exodus. He had the Torah. So if, you, if, if you're getting ready for Pentecost, you're getting fired up, then you need to be redeemed for real. Because the Torah is given to redeem people. So this still applies today to the believer. Whether you're a native born or whether you are grafted in. Hallelujah. So he, it says in the word again, you are agreeing today that Yah is your Elohim. You're agreeing. You are entering into a Covenant. You are agreeing today that Yah is your Elohim and that you will follow his ways. Observe his laws. Miss folks and rulers and do what he says. You agree to that. And in return, Yah is agreeing. This is them into the covenant is agreeing that you are his own, agreeing today that you are his own unique treasure as he promised you that you are to observe all his commandments, his misvotes. Listen to this. If you don't follow Torah and say that you should not obey, you're no longer under the law, then murder is just your opinion. So it's I mean, adultery and stealing. Okay, that's the ten words. That, 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 that's, that's the ten commandments that's given in the Torah. So if you believe that's a not steal, you should follow Torah. Because that's Torah. And to say you no longer under that means you no longer have to abide by those rules. So you got to follow the Torah. Anyway, let's, let's, I want you to understand this because the adversary is cunning and crafty. He has many false prophets out here, false apostles, false teachers telling you lies and they're trying to get money and get rich and get paid and get clout and get esteem and want a big crowd so they're willing to compromise Yah's word and, and don't care about you. It's all about them. And Yah's going to judge them and you. Why? Because nobody has an excuse to remain ignorant. Any man or woman 
that of, of, of Yah should be able to give to you scripture to prove what they're saying and not deceitfully, not out of context, but read it clearly because the word stands by itself. Hallelujah. And there's only one interpretation of the word. Maybe, maybe different revelations. But it says what it says. So Yah is agreeing today that you are his own treasure as he, pro as he promised you that you are to observe his principle and that he will raise you high above all the nations as his, he has made in praise, reputation, and glory and, and that, he, as he said, you will be a holy people for Yah your God. Amen? So then we go down to verse to chapter 27. Verse 1. Then Moshe and all the leaders of Israel gave the orders to the people. They said, observe all the misbos I have given you today. When you cross the Jordan to the land, Yah, your Elohim is giving you, then they begin, they begin to tell about the stones. And don't cut. Why? Why? About these stones, let's, let's read this part. It says, when you cross the Jordan, to the land of Elohim, uh, Yah, your Elohim is given to you. You are to set up large stones, put, put plaster on them, and after crossing over, write this Torah on them. Every word, so that you can enter the land, Yah, your Elohim is given you. A land flowing with milk and honey, as Yah, the Elohim of your ancestors, promised you. When you have crossed the Jordan, you are to set up these stones. I have ordered you today on Mount Eval and put plaster on them. You are to erect an altar to Yah your Elohim, an altar made of stones. Listen, you are not to use any iron tools on them, but to build the altar of Yah your Elohim of uncut stones. And you are to offer a burnt offering on it to Yah your Elohim. Also, you are to sacrifice peace offerings. The there and be joyful in the presence of Yah, your Elohim. You are to write on the stones all the words of this Torah very clearly. Here's the question. Why did Yah tell them, do not use any iron tool on them, but to build the altar of Yah, your Elohim, of uncut stones? Because when man put the iron tools on them, that means they're trying to shape it up how they want to look. They're trying to make it how they want it to be, trying to set it up. And that's the problem now, that we are putting our hand into things, trying to fit it how we want it to fit, and thinking that it's pleasing to Yah. When Yah says, use the stone of uncut stones, the stones that I made. Because from Yah's perspective, what he see that he made is good in his sight. And if human beings put their hands on it, trying to alter what Yah's made, that means they don't like what what what. Well, Yah made, they want to make it look good in their sight, and they want to have what they made presented to Yah as if he would accept how what they think when human beings are fickle, rebellious, and we don't know all of it anyway. The best thing for us to do is submit ourselves to the Most High and follow his ways Amen. in spite of what we think. Amen. So he tells them to follow these ways. This is the covenant. Now, now listen to this. Begin at verse... 15. Yah says in 27 15, a curse on anyone who makes a carved image, something Yah detests of handiwork, the handwork of a craftsman, and sets it up in secret. All the people are to, are to respond by saying, Amen, because they're coming into the covenant. A curse on anyone who makes this, right? Where is y'all getting this from? Exodus 19, 2 says, You are not to have, you are to have no other gods before me. You are not to make for yourselves a carved image or any kind of representation of anything in heaven above, on earth beneath, or in the water below the shorelines. You are not to bow down to them or serve them. For I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, a jealous God punishing the children for the sins of the parents 
to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but is spreading grace to the thousandth generation of those who love and obey me. Now listen, this is one fault that we find that we see right now even in the, in the modern church. Because you got people who got fish symbols. And y'all said don't make anything in the water below. We got people who got crosses. We said don't make anything on earth, on earth neither. We got the dove. We said don't put things in the heaven. And we do these things thinking it's all right. And these things push you from the most high. A cross does not represent Yeshua the Messiah. The fish don't need them. Nor does the dove. What represents the Messiah is the word. Because y'all said when I spoke, I didn't use any of that. I just gave you my word. A curse on people who do that. That's ugly, ain't it? A curse on anyone who dishonors his father or mother. All the people ought to say, Amen. So where is y'all getting this from? Exodus 20 and 12. Honor your father and your mother. Since you ain't lived long on the land in which Yahuwah your Elohim has given you. A curse on anyone who, who moves his neighbor's boundary marker. All the people are saying amen. A curse on anyone who calls a blind person to lose his way on the road. Why? Because the blind person cannot see where he's going. And when you cause him to lose his way, curse on you because you know which way to take. This can have two meanings. Spiritually blind and physically blind. A curse, on, a curse on anyone who interferes with justice for the foreigner, orphan, or widow. And all the people are to say amen. A curse on anyone who has sexual relations with his father's wife because he has violated his father's rights. Where did that come from? First Corinthians 5th chapter, the man with his stepmother. All these things were done that Yah says don't do. And Israel, when it was announced to Israel, they said amen. And amen means so be it. That means they were agreeing with Yah as they were entering into this covenant. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. If you listen closer to what Yah, your Elohim says, observing and obeying all his commandments that I am giving you today, Yah, your Elohim, will raise you high above all the nations of the earth and all the following blessings will be yours in abundance if you do what Yah says. A blessing on you in the city and a blessing on you in the countryside. A blessing on, you, on the fruit of your body, the fruit of your land, the fruit of your livestock, the, the young of your cattle and flocks, a blessing on your grain baskets and kneading bowls, a blessing on you when you go out, a blessing on you when you come in. Yahuwah will cause your enemies attacking you to be defeated before you. They will advance on you in one way and flee before you in seven ways. Yah will order a blessing to be with you in your barns and everything you undertake. He will bless you in the land Yahuwah is giving you. He will establish you as a people separated out from himself as he has sworn to you, if you observe the misvotes of Yah your Elohim and follow his ways. So that's a blessing on everybody that walks into the promises of Yah. Out of obedience, right? Amen. All we have to do is obey, listen, pay attention, follow his ways, right? But verse 15 says this, but if you refuse to pay attention to what Yah your Elohim says, and do not observe and obey all his commandments and regulations which I am giving you today, then all the following curses will be yours in abundance. Ooh. A curse on you in the city, and a curse on you in the countryside, a curse on your grain basket and kneading bowl, a curse on the fruit of your body. What is the fruit of your body? Your children. 
and, and the fruit of your land, and on, and on the young of your flocks and the cattle, a curse on you when you come in, and a curse on you when you go out. Yahuwah will send on you curses, disasters, frustrations, and everything you go, you set out to do until you are destroyed and quickly perish because of your evil actions in abandoning me. So now here it is. Listen to this. Israel did everything that Yah says don't do. And even today, if you look right now, Israel is still doing the very things that Yah says don't do. We have very few here that have awakened, but now you even have Israel telling you that you do not have to follow the Torah because they are giving you teachings from their own slave masters. Instead of them opening their eyes up and their minds up and realizing what the word is saying. And you wonder, people wonder why they're in poverty, why they can't come out of poverty, why they got problems being promiscuous and we're getting killed by the police. All things are happening. It's happening because you are walking in disobedience, but we're failing to understand where the problem is coming from. We want to blame everybody else except for our own selves. Without realizing we are in the condition that we're in because of our own disobedience. That's true. Own disobedience. When all we gotta do is humble ourselves, turn back to the Most High, and He'll restore us and He'll build us up. So listen, as, as I read again in Isaiah fifty nine and two, because you gotta be born again. Because the first Israel, to, and, and listen to me, I'm not saying the church, the church Christianity has not replaced Yah's people. Not at all. They have not. Yah has not forsaken his people. But his people have forsaken him. 59.2 says this, Rather, it is your own crimes that separate you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he doesn't hear. It, it, it's not that he's turned his back on you. Your own sin have hidden his face from you so that he doesn't hear. Push pause. What sin? Inadvertently sinning or intentional sin? Intentionally sinning. Because when Yah entered into the covenant with Israel, he made full known of who he was and what he expected. He explained it very clearly to Israel. And then they said, after every commandment was given, amen. Amen. We agree. And when they violated their covenant because they went to whoring after other gods, they went astray, started bowing down before other gods. Started doing things that was inappropriate in the eyes of the Most High, which caused them to lose out the owner blessings and receive every curse in abundance. So now, because of Israel's disobedience, they can't seem to get ahead. I hear most Israelites saying, you know, I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. They can't get ahead, can't win for losing. And, 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 and we think it's the pressure, the system, or the man that has his hand on us because of where we are. But we can't get ahead. They want to hold us back. No, as a people, we need to turn from our sins and turn back to God. Listen, we, got, we have a bill that's been passed in the state that I live in. I live in the state of Alabama, and the abortion bill has passed. And I, and I agree with it. I think that abortion is a sin and abortion is murder. But people want to get offended and say, well, they passed the abortion bill. Then what about the police killing us unjustly? Well, that's murder too. But guess what? It's also murder for you to kill your own brother. Over in argument, you want to pull your knife out. You want to pull your pistol out and you want to shoot your own brother because you don't like him. Or it's also a, a, a sin for you to be a drug dealer. Knowing you're doing wrong, it's also a sin for you to get high or to be a parent and do your child wrong. If you're going to call sin out, then call sin out. Because sin is not sin, but intentional sin will lead you to death. 
and set it on purpose and know you're doing wrong. If you're going to get mad at your abortion bill, then get mad at yourself for hating your brother. Because the commandment says to love your neighbor. It also says to love your enemy. Who is your enemy? Your enemy is anybody you come in contact to. And all these things that you refuse to do will cause you to get farther and farther and farther away from the Most High. So we got to deal with the issue of sin, then let's deal with the issue of sin. Our sin, our own crimes, our own disobedience has caused us to move far from Yah. So I'm commissioning and telling you today, turn from your sins. Stop doing what you're doing. Swallow your pride. Become convicted and ask Yah to forgive you. The problem is this morning, as we were learning in our Torah class, the word says that, that when you don't confess your sins, it's just like saying that you have not sinned at all. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10 says, if we say that we are without sin, then we are calling him to be a liar. And the word decrees and declares that Yah is not a liar. So we gotta confess our sins. We gotta we gotta confess, we gotta ask him to forgive us and to make us new, to make us whole, to wake us up. So we can come out of what we're in. Hallelujah. So Yeshua said, tell Nicodemus, he said, Listen, man, you hold the office of a teacher in Israel. And you don't know what I'm saying. You have no understanding of what I'm saying. You, as a teacher, to be more sensitive to what I'm saying. Now, I'm going to say this, and this may be offensive, but it'd be all right. We would have had folks leave walk away before. So I'm used to it now. But name one apostle or prophet in the Bible that never honored the Sabbath. Name one apostle or prophet in the Bible that never followed Torah. Name one apostle or prophet in the Bible that honored Christmas. Name one apostle or prophet in the Bible that just indulged in unclean foods. Or a pastor. Because these things are what's killing us. Because we want to follow the sun god worship. And we want to worship on Sunday in agreement. But we should be under the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is a perpetual covenant. You cannot tell me that Yah is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That he don't change. And the same mouth tell me we ain't got to follow Torah. Because that's the case that he changed. And he don't change. And because of these things that we do, it's causing us to live miserable lives. Listen, family, give your children a chance. Like I was telling someone the other day, why would you get high in front of your kids and you spoil their chance in life? Because when they see you doing simple things as far as being promiscuous, as far as drug abuse, do you not think that they're going to grow up and be involved in the same thing that, 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 that you're doing? Chances are they're going to be just like you. If you're acting like you're a whore, whether you're a woman or a man, then chances are your children might become hoes. If you're violent towards your spouse, whether you're a male or a female, chances are your children are going to be violent toward their spouse. If you're lazy and you don't want to go out there and work and, and, and take care of your family, chances are you're going to pass the same thing on down to your children. So if you want to see better days, if you want to have a blessed life, any amount of money you give, the amount of money you give cannot get you out of anything. I don't care if you're Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, or whoever else which is man in the world, Warren Buffett, the amount of money you give cannot get you out of a sinful condition. The amount of money you give can't get you out of whatever you're in because the Most High owns everything, and he has control over everything. So if you want to come out of a bad state, Turn from your sins. Turn to obedience. Matthew 4, 17, Yeshua says, repent, turn, for the kingdom of Yah is at hand. So in order for you Amen. to be born again, Amen. you got to quicken plan. You got to turn to Yeshua. You got to turn to the thing that Yah has raised up. 
For you to look at, and it's done by faith, but it got, it's got to cause you to come out of your sin. I pray right now that Israel has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to them. Hallelujah. And then listen here, if you are a Gentile and, and a Gentile believer, then you can also turn from your sins. You can stop doing the same things that's contrary to the word of Yah and turn to him also. Hallelujah. Instead of living in sin. Not trying to be uh, not trying to be fussing. This wasn't the way my mission was supposed to go today. I was supposed to say something else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we got to obey the most high. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians 5. 2 five. Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. We'll begin at verse 9. Therefore, whether at home or away from home, we try our utmost to please him. For we must all, for we must all appear before the Messiah's court of judgment. Excuse me. Where everybody will receive the good or bad consequences of what he did while he was in the body. All of us one day must appear before the Messiah's court of judgment. Where everyone will receive the good or the bad consequences of what he did while he was in the body. So it is with the fear of Yah before us that we try to persuade people. Moreover, Yah knows us as we really are. And I hope that in your consciences, you too know us as we really are. We are not recommending ourselves to you again, but, but giving you a reason to be proud of us so that you will be able to answer those who boast about a person's appearance rather than the inequalities. If, you, if we are insane, it is for your sake. And if we are sane, it is for your sake. For if the Messiah's love has hold of us, because we are convinced that one man died on behalf of all mankind, which implies that all mankind was already dead. And that he died on behalf of all in order that, that those who, who live should not live any longer for themselves. But for the one who on their behalf died and was raised up. Listen, he died for all, so you should no longer be living for yourself. Yeah. I, I want you to think about that. See law. Hey, see law. Pause and calmly think about that. Stop being selfish. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. Stop being selfish. Quit making it about you. Amen. Live for the most high. Live for the most high. For the Messiah's love has hold of us because we are convinced that one man died on behalf of all mankind, which implies that all mankind was already dead. And that after he died on behalf of of, of all in order that those who who live should no longer live any should no longer for themselves should not live any longer for themselves but for the one who on their behalf died and was raised so if you say you are a believer and you don't live on the behalf of the Messiah you not represent him then you tell a lie I know that sounds kind of tough but it's still the truth you know, it's, it's sad that we live in a time now that the truth is offensive. Mm -hmm. And when you tell the truth, people have your audacity to tell you, don't judge me. <laughs> what? If I see a lemon tree, why would you get mad if I call it, I, why would you get mad for me calling that lemon tree a lemon tree? Don't call it a lemon tree, it can be what it won't. <laughs> it can be a pear tree. No, it's a lemon tree. 
Listen, the adversary is getting so down in this that now we have people, kids, they won't call a boy a girl. They are not able to choose their own gender. And the schools is getting difficult because in some in some states, you, you can't call a little boy a little boy. You gotta call them their name. That's foolishness. If he has a, if he has a male part, he's a boy. Let me say this. If he don't have a uterus, he's a boy. Because like only females have uteruses. <clears throat> only men have Adam's apples. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so from now on, we do not look at anyone from a worldly viewpoint. Even if we once regarded the Messiah from a worldly group viewpoint, we do so no longer. Therefore, if, if anyone is united with the Messiah, he is a new creature, creation. The old has passed. Look, what has come is fresh and new. And it is all from Yah, who through the Messiah has reconciled us to himself and has given us the work of that reconciliation, which is that Yah in the Messiah was reconciling the mankind to himself, not counting me and sin against him and entrusting to us the, the, message, the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of the Messiah in effect. The Yah is making his appeal through us. What we do, what we do is appeal on the behalf of the Messiah. Be reconciled to Yah. Yah made this sinless man to be a sin offering on our behalf so that in a union with him, we might fully share in Yah's righteousness. So you got to trust. You got to be a new person. And accepting Yeshua through faith reconciles you back to the Most High. Amen? Amen. We're going to go to Romans 8th chapter. We're going to get ready to end. It's important that we, that we understand being born again, living right, not living in sin. Live right for real. We were talking this morning in our Torah class about uh, polygamy. Can a man have more than one wife? I recommend that you do not have more than one wife. It's not beneficial. It can cause you to go astray. But guess what though? The word says we are drawn away and enticed by our own lust, our own evil desire. So most of us want more than one wife just because we want to have sex with more than one woman. We had a wrong motive in what we're doing. See, most of us do things out of bad motives. Let your motive be right. Without any hidden agenda or hidden motives, y'all can move in your life. But when your motive is hidden, hmm. And most of us Yes, sir. Romans 8 and 1. Therefore, there is no longer any condemnation awaiting those who are in union with the Messiah. There is no longer any condemnation. Why? Because the Torah of the Spirit, which produces this life in union with the Messiah, has set us free from the law of the Torah of sin and death. This is not saying that it has set you free from the law. No. It has set you free from the very same thing that has had you bound. Because what has happened is Israel broke the covenant already. Adam had already sinned. He broke one law. He ate from the tree. And when he did, when he broke the law of God and rebelled against God, he received another law, which was sin and death. He began to live by sin. He, believed, he began to live by his own nature, his own mindset, by Israel's refusal.
to obey to obey Yah's law and put their law on put his law on their own heart. They begin to walk by their own mindset, their own ways, their own law, which brought them out of place, brought condemnation upon them, and placed them under the penalty of the curse of the law. And the curse of the law is death. And the curses of the law are, 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 are because of acts of disobedience. And all these curses of the law came upon the children of Israel because of their disobedience to Yah's word. Because they made an agreement with him. They said to him, we agree when he says, don't have any other gods. We agree, don't dishonor your mother and your father. We agree, don't come to your neighbor's wife. We agree, they agree. And he told them, if you pay attention, take heed, walk in my ways, I'll bless you in abundance, in the city and in the field. I'll move on you. The fruit of your body, I'll raise you up. But if you disobey me, if you walk in sin, if you walk in iniquity, then these curses will be yours in abundance. That Shua Hamashiach's death, his burial, and resurrection freed you from those curses. All you have to do is accept him by your trust and be born again. See, one thing about the Most High is he always had grace. Uh oh, there he is. We got to prove that, don't we? Because people say that, that the, the God of the Old Testament never had grace. He was mean and evil and low down. They said that. He always had Hased. Hased is a Hebrew word. Which means loving kindness, which means grace. It don't just mean unmerited favor. How do I know that y'all always had grace? Well, okay, let's read the Bible here. Y'all ready? Exodus. And then we're going to go back to uh, Romans. Exodus 34. Beginning at verse 5, says this Y'all descended in the cloud stood with him there and pronounced the name of Yah, the name, the character, the reputation of Yah. Yah passed before him and proclaimed, Yud, hey, vav, hey. Those are the, the letters to his name. Yahuwah, Yehovah, Yahweh, it's, his, it's, it's God, it's Elohim, merciful and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in what? Grace. And truth, showing grace to the thousandth generations, forgiving our offenses, crimes, and sins, yet not exonerating the guilty, but causing the negative effect of the parents' offenses to be experienced by their children and grandchildren, even by the third and fourth generations. And at once, Moses bowed his head to the ground, prostrating himself, and said, If I have now found favor in your view, Y'all then please let y'all go with us, even though, even though they are stiff-necked people, and pardon our offenses and sins, and take us as your possession. So y'all always had grace. He's always had compassion. And because of his compassion, because of his grace, he has given us a way out. Yeah. And that way out is to be born again. To accept Yeshua HaMashiach. And if you, accept, if you accept Yeshua, then you no longer face condemnation. Man. Yes, you no longer face it. Let's go to verse 9. Romans 8 says this. Romans 8 and 9 says, But you do not identify with your old nature, but with the Spirit, provided the Spirit of Yah is living inside you. For anyone who doesn't have the spirit of Messiah doesn't belong to him. So let's push pause then. The spirit of Messiah. The rule of Kodesh, right? Mm -hmm. What does it do? It convicts us of what? It convicts us of what? Sin. Sin. Mm -hmm. What else does it do? It leads and guides us into all sure. truth. So if you are still sinning, doing wrong, you may not have the spirit of the Messiah on the inside of you. Because it convicts you of sin. 
Godly sorrow works repentance. So if you if, 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 if it convicts you and you know you're wrong, it causes you to do what? Turn to the shoe. Not just say I'm sorry out of my mouth, but to have an active response to turn from doing wrong, to turn to the most high, and to begin to do his ways. If you don't have the spirit of Messiah, then you are none of his. And then therefore you are not born again. So it don't matter what you going to church. Going to ministry, going to, 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 to church on the Sabbath, don't make you a believer. No more than you been in the hen house, make you a chicken. It's the life that you live. It's how you live your life. Are you growing in y'all? Mm -hmm. uh, have you been born again 20 years? So you say you're born again and you still got a problem fornicating 20 years later. You still can't help yourself watch the pornography. You still can't help yourself looking lust after other men or other women. You still can't help yourself again violent and want to beat somebody down. You still can't help yourself. Then you may not have the spirit of a Messiah on the inside of you. And if you don't, then you're none of his. But now listen, if that's the case, then just turn. Repent. Ask for forgiveness and begin to do, do different. Come out of what you're in. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. However, if the Messiah is in you, then on the one hand, the body is dead because of sin, but on the other hand, the spirit is given life because Yah considers you righteous. How does Yah consider you righteous? Through the Messiah. The Messiah has righteous to us. He's made you right. He's reconciled you to Yah, causes you to know the most high. And you can walk in his ways. And if the spirit of the one the spirit of the one who raised Yeshua from the dead. Who is the one who raised Yeshua from the dead? Yah is living in you. Then the one who raised Yeshua from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. Here it is, y'all. So then, brothers, we don't owe a thing to our old nature right. that, that will require us to live according to our old nature. For if you live according to your old nature, you will certainly die because your old nature is hostile, contrary. Rebels against y'all. Your old nature, your old mindset, how you think, what you want to do, your old ways. You don't want to think, you don't have to continue to live like that. Come out of what you're in. Turn from it. For if you live according to your old nature, you will certainly die. But if by the Spirit you keep putting to death the practices of the body, you will live by the Spirit. You know, you, you know how you live by the Spirit? Can I tell you how simple way how to live by the Spirit? Being obedient to what the Spirit says. What's the Spirit saying? The Spirit of Yah lies on what His Word. If you're led by the Spirit, everything the Spirit leads you to do is in this word. Amen. So you, all you got to do, if you feel like you want to cut, no, excuse me, if you feel like you want to go lie, just say, you know what, tell the truth. Mm -hmm. You want to steal, just don't steal. Be obedient. Amen? Amen. Verse 14 says, all who are led by Yah's Spirit are Yah's son. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to bring you back again into fear. On the contrary, you received a spirit who makes us sons and by whose power we cry out, Abba. Now listen, the spirit that makes you sons. When you are born, listen, hear me real well. Son, sonship is a position. So when you receive the spirit that makes you a son, it puts you in a position to have an inheritance. Right. 
Yah is your inheritance. His kingdom is your inheritance. I want you all to get ready. We, we, last night we were doing a study, a, a study uh, when the Shabbat came in at home, and we was talking about the wedding feast. And as we was reading, the, uh, reading it, 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 it says, as they compelled men to come, they, they, they finally had the wedding feast. It said the king came out. And he looked at everybody that was there. And he saw one man that was not dressed for the wedding. Now listen here. That man understood that he, that he was going to a wedding. And, and, and when I studied a little more, even this morning, it said that the king had provided clothes for everybody that was in the wedding. But the one man did not get the clothes the king was provided. He was his own thing. So when the king went to him all nice, king said, friend, did you not know that you were coming to a wedding? He told his servants, go and get him out of here. And they kept him into outer darkness. Mm. And then he said, many are called, but few are chosen. So then therefore, if you know you're going to the wedding, dress appropriately. Because if you're not appropriately dressed, then you won't be chosen, no matter how much you call. And if you want to be chosen, then you'll get the right clothing on yourself. You will dress appropriately, and you'll begin to do what the Most High requires of you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So y'all, we thank you for your mercy and your compassion. We thank you most high for your loving kindness and for your goodness. And we ask you to help us to walk in obedience, to turn from our sins, to surrender ourselves to you, to make us new. Renew us, Yah. We receive Yeshua HaMashiach as the Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua the Messiah. We, by faith, by trust, Yah, we believe that who he is who you called him to be. We believe he's the savior of the world. We believe that by him, through him, we're reconciled to you. And through him, we can know you. So I pray, y'all, help us to grow in your word, to grow in your purpose, to grow in your strength, to grow in your spirit. We need you and cannot make it without you. So we ask you to help us and to keep us. And, you, and just help us walk in your purpose. In Yeshua's name, amen. Uh -uh, come, I need you to come and sing the area of the blessing. You move too fast. Hallelujah. We get Malachi come say the area of the blessing. Hallelujah. shine upon you and be gracious to you. May I lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom.